Hey, hey, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make authentic 8-bit retro chiptune, like the kind of music you would hear from an NES or a Game Boy or a Commodore 64. I'm going to give you two completely free methods uh, that you can use to make your own chiptune. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to actually compose an 8-bit piece with you watching. And I'm going to give you some compositional tips that I use when composing with an 8-bit sound palette. So definitely stick around for that. Okay, so for the first method, the easiest, probably the most low-hanging fruit way to make 8-bit chiptune music is to download a VST instrument and to use it within an existing DAW. So the thing about the VST instrument route is that there are some pretty crappy, honestly, some crappy chiptune ones. Uh, there are free ones, there are paid ones, so it requires a little bit of digging. However, I think I've found the best one on the internet right now, so let's go ahead and take a look in Reaper and I'll show you what I got. So here in Reaper, I have this VST instrument loaded up. It's called NES VST, very simply. Um, it's excellent. It's created by a gentleman named Matt Montag, and I'll go ahead and put the link to where you can download this in the description. If you like this, definitely consider donating. I can tell that this, uh, this guy is just uh, super passionate about this, and it's a real labor of love. So definitely check that out and donate if you're able. Okay, so the cool thing about the NES VST is it really gives you a lot of the functionality that you would find in an NES. You have things like your volume envelopes, your duty cycle, which is basically changing the width of the of the square wave channel to give it a different sound. So I'll tell I'll kind of show you what it sounds like when you play a square wave with different duty cycles here. So that's that. And let's change this. Here it kind of has a thinner sound. So the NES did have the capability to actually change the duty cycle of the square to give it kind of a different timbre. So that's pretty cool. You've got all sorts of things like the ability to load DPCM samples. Uh, they have to be super low quality, just like the NES could only play back really, really, really compressed uh, samples, kind of like the bongos from Super Mario 3. It's got um, defaults here, uh, presets, so you can just load up a square wave, load up a triangle wave, load up a noise channel. So this kind of brings me to my next point of if you want to create authentic chiptune, right? And like there are people who care so much about it being authentic. I don't care create what you want to create. But if you want to create authentic chiptune, I would recommend investigating the actual limitations of the sound chip that you want to emulate. For example, the NES sound chip um, had a triangle wave channel, it had two square wave channels, a noise channel, and a DPCM sample channel. So then you're left with three melodic channels. Okay, so if you want to be authentic to the NES, you really can only have three simultaneous voices playing at once, a triangle wave and two square waves. So I mocked up kind of a little composition here. What I did was I went ahead and duplicated out the VST. So I've got two squares here, I've got a triangle here, a noise channel and a DPCM. So let's take a listen to each of these in concert. So first I have my DPCM samples, kind of laying down a little beat here. And the noise channel is uh, providing some hi-hat action here. So I think what I'm actually going to do is go into this MIDI here and shorten these MIDI notes so that the decay of the hi-hat is even shorter. So it's more like this. Yeah, I like that better. That's nice. Okay, then we have our triangle wave, which is our bass channel. Then we have our first square wave, which is providing the melody. Second square wave. Providing a little counterpoint. So you can see that you can really do a lot of cool stuff, and this is not even getting to the different effects and the different, you know, pulse wave uh, modulation that you can do with the uh, with this VST. So hats off to you, Matt. 
awesome VST. If you want to make some uh, NES music, check that out. So the second method for creating authentic 8-bit chiptune is by far my favorite, and that is to use a tracker. Now, we don't have access to the original software that Koji Kondo and Nobuo Uematsu used to uh, create those awesome classic 8-bit chiptunes on the original NES. However, the closest thing that we can get to emulating that software is a tracker. A tracker is a free piece of software that basically imposes the exact same limitations of a particular sound chip. So it might be the NES, it might be the Game Boy. And the really cool thing about this tracker, particularly Defle Mask, which is my favorite by far, is that you have quite a plethora of systems to choose from. So if we go up here to options, and this is a free program, by the way, uh, definitely donate. This is donationware as well. So if you like this, definitely donate. We can see we have the Genesis, an arcade, the YM2151, and the PCM chip. You can do a Commodore 64. Sega Master System, even Sega Genesis with an extension. You get the NEC PC engine. I don't even know what that is. You got the NES and you got the Game Boy. So right off the bat, you're just given this incredible array of sound chips. And some people look at this and they kind of balk because it's like this is primitive. It looks like a spreadsheet, like it looks like math. But honestly, I composed an entire soundtrack for Siberian uh, using the Sega Genesis module of this. And by the end of the first song, I was moving just as quickly and feeling just as inspired in this program than I was in my DAW or any other instrument that I'd be sitting down at. So it's very cool, very inspiring. So I'll tell you what, let's see if we can compose ourselves a little NES track here. I got kind of a contrapuntal idea that I've played with on the piano, so let's see if we can make this happen in Defle Mask. So I got Defle Mask open, and I have it uh, on the Nintendo NES system. So first things first, let's get our tempo set up. 75 is good. Set up a little metronome for myself. Let's go ahead and save this. Dude the dude dot co dot uk now we're going to set up our melody over here which is this you can actually draw in your own wavetables here and make like interesting effects like echoes and stuff That's pretty cool, actually. I'm just going to stick with this for now. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. Watch this. I'm going to make it go up and then back down. Let's see if that works. Huh. Why is it not working? Oh, you know why? Because I think in the NES the volume of the triangle channel can't be changed. It's either on or off. There's no, there's no like in between. So that's interesting. That's another limitation. So we can't, we can't do that swell that I wanted to do. So maybe we'll put the bass in the square. Let's see how that sounds. Doesn't sound as good. I like the bass in the triangle. I really do. F-sharp. That's what I want to do. This actually needs to be up an octave. So what I can do is I can select all this. And then I can hit Control F4, brings it up an octave, boom. It's coming back to me. To do an echo, you basically have to play the same note and then you reduce the volume. That's how they did echo back in the day, so. All right, so let's do this, watch this. Let's put this here. Let's 
sick. This might sound like absolute butt, but I'm going to try it. Isn't that like kind of what composers do? Like, I feel like that should be on a plaque just above my desk. Literally, quote, this might sound like absolute butt, but I'm going to try it. That's the motivational poster for a composer right there. Very high potential for butt sounding. Oh, it's actually not bad. I think I can jive with that. A few moments later. y'all i hope you enjoyed that track uh, before i let you go i want to give you a few crucial tips if you're going to be composing in the 8-bit sound palette because it really is a lot different than anything else that i've ever composed in so the first tip is that you need to be creative with implying harmony okay so i just talked about how you know there's all these limitations and i'm a firm believer that limitations breed creativity but when we're looking at these limitations you're telling me matt that there's only three melodic channels how the heck am i supposed to voice four note chords is it even possible and of course the answer is absolutely there's tons of jazzy four chord music all over the nes uh, a canon of music there are a few ways to do this so the first thing is of course you can simply arpeggiate your chords um, so that the channels are not playing simultaneously so if you wanted to play a c major seven for example even a, a c a c9 you know you can you can arpeggiate your chords that way and the second way, and something that Koji Kondo did a lot, especially in the um, Mario series, was you can drop the fifth. So this is kind of getting into some music theory, but when you're looking at uh, a chord, let's just say C major seven, for example, you have C, which is the root note, E, which is the third, G, which is the fifth, and B, which is the seventh. Now, each of these uh, tones are extremely important, frankly, except for the fifth, right? So the the one, the C here, the root note, defines the chord, essentially. The E defines whether it's major or minor, which is very important. And then, of course, you need to get that seventh in there to get that seventh sound. However, the fifth just exists to strengthen the one. So you really don't need it. Honestly, you, you don't. So um, what a lot of composers do and what I'll do is just to drop that. So if I just hit C, E, and B, that's still implies that nice C major 7 
harmony while still staying within the limitations of the NES. Another tip is to be creative with effects. So the NES can really produce some amazing effects, especially if you're using a tracker that, that I would argue are extremely difficult or even impossible to accomplish in just an ordinary DAW. If you listen to old NES soundtracks, they're just riddled with effects. Arpeggios, vibrato, tremolo, crazy like portamento slides up and down. So go crazy with the effects. Check out the Defle Mask Manual because that's really what's going to compensate for the limitations are really interesting and nostalgic effects. Another piece of advice I would offer for composing in the 8-bit style is to really think contrapuntally, okay? So that's just a fancy word for saying, if you're like me and you come from like a folk or pop or singer-songwriter background, which I do, you're probably used to either playing guitar chords and singing or playing chords harmony with your left hand on the piano and melody with your right hand. Now, unfortunately, because of those limitations, you need to break out of that thinking and not think as, not think in chords, but think as individual voices moving uh, contrapuntally, which is basically means using counterpoint. So they move, each voice kind of takes on a life of its own and moves uh, in concert uh, to support, but also distinctly from the other voices in the composition. Studying Bach counterpoint, studying even like old church hymns, if you can get your hands on a hymnal, uh, and even trying to implement those uh, Bach cantatas or uh, church hymns into a tracker is great practice. The last tip I would give is if you're starting out, don't compose directly into the tracker. It's going to be overwhelming. That's like trying to figure out a new piece of software, trying to write music, trying to arrange, trying to do sound design all at once. And, and that's just, frankly, it just sounds crazy overwhelming. Start by uh, going into a software like MuseScore, a notation app, or your DAW, and composing a simple idea and then trying to implement it into a tracker. Um, I wouldn't start with composing in a tracker. Now, after you keep doing this, you'll start to find that it's actually quicker to go straight to the tracker. And that's a really fun feeling because you end up creating different and new and unique ideas in the tracker that you wouldn't otherwise just in a DAW or sitting at a piano. So that's it guys that is my primer on creating 8-bit music there's a lot more to learn just about the art of game composition what i would recommend to you is just go to composercode.com i have around 30 hours of interviews with industry professional composers all the way from AAA composers to indie game composers and there's just a ton of knowledge hidden in those interviews the other thing I would say is go to my article on how to become a video game composer. It's this ultimate guide that I wrote up based on everything I've learned if you're interested in becoming a game composer. And another free resource for you is my resource guide of all the best free resources for video game composers. Why am I wearing these headphones? I don't need to wear these anymore. And you can download that via the link in the description. So thanks so much for watching. It's been very fun to make these videos and I hope to continue to make them. And I'm even planning a full-fledged course on the fundamentals of game audio. I'm super excited about that. Leave a comment if that's something you'd be interested in. I'd love to hear your feedback. Anyway, thanks so much. Happy holidays. Have a great one.